Welcome to the Talking Shed podcast. Uh, today it is just the uh, the duo. Yep. Dynamic. Oh yeah. And uh, Cody and I were down here. Uh, if if your dad had anything to say about it, he'd he'd say the dreadful duo. Well, he's not here today, <laughs> so uh, he is headed to the Ohio Beef Expo. Mm-hmm. Um, what does the Ohio Beef Expo have to do with fending equipment? Um, a lot, you know. Uh, anyone who's been to our farm, you've probably seen that we kind of farm on the side. We we raise some cattle, and so Todd and Ryan and their kids are showing cattle there. But then we also have got a booth down there for yeah. equipment. Mm-hmm. They've got a little showroom, I guess. We've been going there probably what ten. Yeah, it's years? been a while. I bet yeah. it's ten years. And you know, it's it's not a knock out of the park show, but being that. 90% of the family's there, and now Amber lives down there. Mm-hmm. You know, Justin, um, you know, obviously lives down there. So we're all going to be there. Oh, yeah. I'm headed down. I don't know when. Yep. I'll be down there Saturday. But it's kind of a family affair. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, um, it's kind of a family gathering, honestly. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that's kind of the long and short on why they're heading to the expo. Mom and dad are setting up the booth today. Today is Wednesday. Uh, sorry, Thursday the 16th. And uh, so they're setting up, uh, going to have a spreader there, going to have a little booth. Mm-hmm. So if you're headed to the Ohio Beef Expo, uh, look us up. Yeah. It's a, uh, that, that thing has really yeah. grown, that expo. It used to just kind of be a cattle show. Yeah. Man, that's a, it starts today, actually. Mm-hmm. They started, they, they branched out here to Thursday already. Um, so I think it starts at noon today, but they've got so many bull sales, so many, mm-hmm. Yeah, Grandpa, Grandpa uh, was helping them out yesterday, and uh, Grandpa said he was seeing trailers from all over the place, Oklahoma, mm-hmm. West Virginia, Virginia, uh, I mean, Pennsylvania, all over the place. A lot of these guys come from all over to get some bull sales, and me and Grandpa were kind of joking about it today, and I was like, well, they're they're in the hills. That's all they got is cattle, so it's well, kind of a their little gathering that they all meet up and see each other. And Yeah, we, us- we have, you know, there's a lot of connections for us, too, there. I mean, a lot of the cattle guys are customers of ours, too. So mm-hmm. definitely uh, definitely a good outlet for us. Oh, yeah. It's a great show. And if you're in Ohio um, and enjoy ag in general, I suggest going there. They've got something for everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got great food. They've got, um, you Can't- know can't leave out the deer and turkey expo oh shoot that's right yeah my gosh this is a hunting podcast yeah forgot about that so yes i will be definitely going to the uh deer and turkey expo yep uh we'll make our wives happy for a few hours right yeah they'll (laughs) love that but uh the boys will love it yeah yeah i'll take the boys in deer and turkey expo um that's pretty cool too uh we'll go in there and talk to the real podcasters the working class bow hunter guys that's right yeah yeah but uh for sure so yeah we're up here recording uh kind of over the lunch break and uh of course the email blast goes out uh tomorrow and so i'm gonna get this podcast uh pushed into that later today but cody and i just wanted to sit down and and record talk to everyone about what's been going on what's new um one thing that is kind of going on we're creeping up on uh, 5,000 total uh, downloads on yeah. the uh, podcast. Mm-hmm. So that's a big deal. That's big. Um, so that's cool. We really enjoy doing it. And uh, we've mentioned before uh, how much we appreciate everyone listening. And I could not believe the amount of people at Louisville that came up to us. And and still today, I've had guys email me or guys I talk to on the phone say, hey, I listen to your podcast. We really appreciate that. We mm-hmm. we spend uh, you know a lot of time doing it, and uh, but it, it's fun. So yeah, today uh, we're going to talk about a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I guess what what are we going to dive into today? Well, you know we were uh, we were talking earlier, kind of about what stage guys are in. I'm going to give everyone the pulse of of the farmers across the U.S. that I've been feeling, uh, based on where everyone's at. So. Um, you know, it's mid March and we've been starting to get Raven calls. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have a lot of videos online about how to set up your Raven controller, replacing flow meters, 
this and that, we've those calls have dramatically increased. I mean, yeah. we've had ten to twenty this week. This yeah, this week has been crazy on Raven. So talk sure. about where them guys are calling in from. Um, so I had a cat in Kansas that has I've been on the phone with him for probably cumulatively of about two hours just trying to get this sucker to work um you know they're they're doing a lot of pre-plant um, oh anhydrous yeah yeah um i had a cat from is he on wheat doing that on wheat or do you know i am not sure <clears throat> they do a lot of anhydrous on wheat i think out there i'm not sure i mean i know i know it sounds weird but i've talked to guys who like go in standing wheat and like put in hydrogen. Really? Mm-hmm. I'm not, I don't know. I'm, I have not heard that. I, the majority of the guys that I've dealt with have been corn, a pre plant for corn, I think. But uh, I know it's been pretty hot and heavy here for, for at least me on the Raven side of things. I think I've talked to probably, I'd say, five or six different individuals on those and trying to get them squared away. And yeah. It, you know, it's nothing, you know, as far as uh, pretty dramatic as far as it, it's. You know, they watch the video. They're like, man, I've watched this video like two or three times and I, I still can't get it. Can you help me out? Absolutely. You know, that's what we're here for. And that's why we put those YouTube videos out and everything else. So, yeah. And, you know, we're not saying at all that we're a Raven expert center or anything, but I'm just sharing the knowledge that, that we've gained over the years working on the Raven stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, we sell all the components and the coolers. And so um, we find that there's a void there. Maybe a guy bought a used bar over the winter and had a Raven cooler on it. Yeah. Um, I had a call this morning from Missouri. A guy fired it up, <clears throat> um, opened up his first uh, tank of anhydrous, and it started leaking out the uh, the vapor tubes. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty sure sign that there's some O-ring shot in there. Yeah. Maybe the insides might have rust holes in them. I told him to make sure it's bled off and uh, go ahead and, and take it apart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's he's working on doing that, and he's gonna call me back. And if he needs the O rings and the insides, we're gonna ship that to him. Mm-hmm. I try and get him up and running. So what I'm saying is, uh, there's some stuff happening this spring already. For sure, I'm dealing with some guys in South Carolina on their planter. We're putting some Yetter fertilizer stuff on it, and they're ready to roll. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. I was talking with a guy on a spreader down in Tennessee last week, and I called him Monday touching base he and he was looking to buy one mm-hmm. and he said uh he said well i was going to buy one but we're going to be planting corn next week yeah i said really he said yeah i think we're going to be planting corn so honestly i don't have time i'm going to hire all this spread and done for right now i yeah. said you know that's fine but it's amazing me how that that corn planting is starting to creep north you know obviously stuff been planted down south texas and all that mm-hmm. but it's starting to really creep north yeah I got some guys in Alabama. They're going. Yep. That's uh, where uh, I've got an ST cart heading down to, uh, it's not Alabama, it's Mississippi. And uh, they're doing some strip tilling and stuff like that. So they're patiently waiting on their ST cart, but I want to make sure it's right for them so that way it works. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, they had that in the shop this week. But Mm -hmm. anyway... um, Another thing I've noticed a lot of recently, well, mainly it was yesterday. There was a decent amount of wheat top dressed yesterday. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. I saw uh, stainless steel rigs going up and down the road. I saw some sprayers sitting in fields. Um, It was just frozen enough uh, for a little bit Mm -hmm. there, I think, Tuesday evening into Wednesday morning, midday, that, uh, that guys were able to get... Uh, some wheat top dressed. Yeah. Um, I, my guy that I sold a uh, wide drop bar to here and, uh, I think he's in Northern Illinois. Um, he, he just got some floater tires yesterday. I seen it on Snapchat. I messaged him. I said, Hey, you hooked that bar up yet? Well, I don't have my Hagee yet. So <clears> he, he got some floater tires for it. So they're, they're getting ready to rock and roll on some top dressing, some wheat and stuff like that. So yeah, that'll be cool. <clears throat> so I've got some wheat out. I gave the co-op the go-ahead yesterday to whenever they get a chance put some 28 on there. But yeah, I don't know. I'm no professional wheat grower, so it's <laughs> trial yet. trial and error. Not a wheat warrior yet. No way. <laughs> no way. Wheat, Not even close. Uh, speaking of warriors, uh, 
uh, Russell Hedrick. I don't know if any of you are familiar with who Russell Hedrick is, but he is going to be on Corn Warriors this year, and we are uh, we're working with Yetter, and uh, we're going to ship him some twenty nine ninety sixes. So yeah, we're shipping him twelve of those, and uh, what's he doing with them? Uh, so he's going to be side dressing his corn with them. Oh, okay. is what he's going to be doing. And uh, we're we're working with Russell on that, and uh, need to get him a triple threat. And that's what I I think I'm going to send one or two of them with, with that, and uh, I, I need to get uh, <clears throat> Russell's number from I've got from it. Jeffrey, and uh, yeah, we need to get him hooked up with a triple threat and have him. Yeah, I've got it. He called in here the other day and talked to Corbin, I believe. Yeah, I think so. And I texted him to make sure that he was taken care of. So. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you know what I'm getting at is things are waking up. Oh yeah, in, in for the sure. ag world, mm-hmm. uh, you know, here in Ohio, we're you know we're a little ways off yet. Oh yeah, but, for but sure. you get you know down there south, it, you don't have to go very far south, no. and there's some guys, you know, they got their foot on the clutch, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's getting close to go time for so sure. That's pretty sure. cool, but yep. mm-hmm. it's a little bit nerve wracking at the same time. Yeah, um, but I think we're sitting good in the shop, man. What what Devin and Brent have knocked out this week's pretty crazy. I know it. I like, know it. Some planner jobs and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Like we've we've gotten a lot done here in the last two weeks accumulatively, and <clears throat> it's you know it it's adding up. Like it it's definitely going, and uh, Wabash has definitely made us more efficient mm-hmm. in that aspect of things. You know, we can have five different projects versus one going on. Yeah, so, and I know. We talk about Wabash all the time. That's the new location. But there's going to be a day, and we don't know when, that the garage door man was just here this morning mm-hmm. to tell us that our garage doors are going to be here in the next few weeks, and he's going to come get them installed. But when when we're close to finish, we're going to have an open house here, yeah. and we're going to invite everyone mm-hmm. to come uh, see what we talk about. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure, yeah, that's exciting for us, for sure. But, uh yeah just planner jobs and uh we've been a bunch of applicators and everything else it's just been kind of nuts so yeah in the last probably the you know if we want to talk about some hot topics in the last couple of weeks it's probably been applicators yeah you know we yeah. sold about a week and a half ago we sold a pair up to michigan mm-hmm. uh j and m's were now sold out of the 60 footers mm-hmm. um that used umber firth yep 60 sold. footer that we got out of michigan mm-hmm. um we just sold one jake just sold one this morning mm-hmm. i sold uh, one yesterday yep 15 mm-hmm. row blue jet left this morning mm-hmm. you sold an 11 row yesterday mm-hmm. um that'll, so <laughs> that'll head down to kentucky here next week i'm thinking so. yeah so yeah, things are things are moving on the applicator side, which which tells me, you know, of course everyone's in a different phase at, at all times, but there's guys that are kind of done with the planner side of things and they're moving on to side dress already. For sure. So for sure. that's that's good. Yeah. Yeah. It just I think in, you know, just the short two years that I've been here, you know, I think that this whole planner thing has kind of gone and it's already been gone already and not necessarily gone but it's getting they're getting finished up with planners for sure and you know usually you know we don't send our first step you know this year we were fortunate enough to send out our first applicator there before december Mm -hmm. and we're probably we probably have what i'd say 80 percent of the ones that we've sold are to the customer almost already. probably yeah yeah i mean it, it's nuts yeah so. we got two that are sitting here kind of on deck they're 99 percent done they're going to get buttoned up and delivered next week yep uh, i just got a text from j&m about an hour ago there's a 60 footer ready to pick up down there mm-hmm. so yep so yeah they're they're spitting them out down there at the factory we go down pick them up go through them get them the way we want them make sure they're good and then then they leave yeah and then then we turn it over to Grandpa. Yep, Grandpa hops in, hops in his chair in the semi, and he he trucks them. He <clears> gets them <throat> gets them from point A to point B. So yeah, yeah, he's gonna head down Kentucky next week on that on that eleven row applicator that I sold to those guys down there. Uh, they actually own a BBI spreader too. Mm. So Seth sold him a BBI spreader last year. Um, 
Hunter sold them some row cleaners at Louisville, and they came uh, they came yesterday to pick them up, and they were like, I was there, and they were like, hey, come out here. We want to look at this applicator. I'm like, okay. So we went out there and talked a little bit about strip till, and they ended up buying an applicator. So definitely, definitely uh, thankful for the return customers there, for sure. But uh, that, that oh, was yeah. pretty neat. So I had no idea that that uh, spreader was even down there. I didn't know that. So sure, he had a PTO issue, and uh, we had to get him a new PTO there last year. And basically his PTO wouldn't come off of his actual PTO on his tractor, so he had to get a new insert for his tractor because the bto wouldn't come off of it so really we're gonna try to get get that off of there for him and maybe ship that down with it so a couple of uh a couple of snap rings and hopefully a punch and a hammer and we'll get a can, can of pb blaster yeah yeah, <clears throat> yeah. for sure cool. so yeah that's stuff's, good stuff's been moving for sure but uh like i was saying i, I i'm from the two years that i've been here you know i've definitely seeing it to where more of this stuff is just coming sooner and sooner um you know wide drop bars are the same way you know we've got probably 80 percent of the wide drop bars to customers already Mm -hmm. Uh, and the only reason why we don't have the other ones to customers are because we're either waiting on parts or something along those lines but we'll get them to them for sure so yeah the the other unit that's that's been very popular is the spreaders Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. you know we sold a spreader yesterday um, Seth has got a pretty good bead on our single axle magna spread. Yeah. Um, so spreaders have been popular. You know, dry, everyone is kind of aware of the dry fertilizer market. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good right now. I think there's some savings to be had if, if you can spread. Yep. Um, so that's kind of really kicked those things in the hind end pretty good. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So definitely, <clears throat> definitely been busy, but, uh, I'm sure you guys don't want to hear us keep talking about all of the stuff that we sold. So, but, uh, no, just as far as, you know, guys are got, got their planners buttoned up and everything, you know, it's, it's time to start thinking about, you know, side dress stuff too. You know, you got all the planners and stuff completed and they're out of the, out of the shop. So we, we want to, you know, focus on nitrogen applications since that's been the biggest topic here, you know, in the last, uh, last year or two and so guys are working on getting those things buttoned up um a local co-op here buys a lot of parts off of us um you know they're they're completely going through them getting them ready for for side dress season you know they're out spreading and top dressing wheat and whatnot you know so you know they're they're looking at the next phase already and that usually doesn't always happen at least everywhere anyway so right Mm -hmm. but yeah, definitely a good thing for us, and we're yeah. uh, we're excited about it. So <clears throat> yeah, probably uh, you know some of the other things coming up for us is uh, you know the we got some Salford meetings. We do some customer appreciation Salford meetings. Mm-hmm. We got one out in Nova next Thursday, a week mm-hmm. from today. Yep, and then we've got one the following week here, yep. uh, basically in Coldwater. Yep. So yeah, um, the, the week after. So. Yeah. So th- those will be good. Those mm-hmm. are always good times. Get customers in that own Salfords and mm-hmm. and uh, and feed them a good meal and and uh, have a good time. Treat them right, and uh, that's always great to get everyone together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, you know, Lee's going to come up for it. So yeah, Lee Kilpatrick, yeah. national sales manager for Salford. You guys heard that podcast. My goodness, if you haven't, you need to listen to it. Lee is a ball of fire. The guy is is as good as it gets. Georgia uh, boy, man. He's, Georgia boy. He's he's full of it. He loves it. Yes. And, uh, and uh, we're very, very excited to have him up here. Mm-hmm. Of course, we're going to show him. He's never been to the Wabash store. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's going to be great. He's, he's flying into Cincinnati. He'll be here for a couple of days. And, and that's going to be a big deal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Lee's Lee's by far mm-hmm. one of our favorite people that we get to interact with on a on a weekly basis. As right. far as interacting with him, and uh, we always see him at uh, you know Farm Science Review and stuff like that. Him and Gunkelman are in the Salford booth there, and you know it's uh, you know they they definitely see where we are as far as standing on the Salford side of things, and they really appreciate stuff that we do, and we we kind of show it back to them. 
Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. Speaking of that podcast that I did with Lee, that thing is our most popular podcast in a long time. Yeah, I mean that yeah, thing. I can believe that that thing got some views, mm-hmm. um, and for good reason. Um, if you haven't listened to that one, I I really strongly urge you to do so. That thing was a lot of fun. We did it there at the Louisville Farm Show as we were cleaning up. So, mm-hmm. yep. Um, you know, we haven't been hunting much. No, we haven't. Um, well, if if you're in tune with the coyote world at all, um, coyotes are a little bit hard to hunt in March. Yep, they're denned up. They're den. They're starting to to think about denning. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the females are bred right now. Mm-hmm. They got bred in like January and February. But once they're bred, they start to get denning on their mind. Yeah. They start digging. Um, they don't travel nearly as far. And so they're not as receptive to calls. So March is a hard month to hunt coyotes. Mm-hmm. So we've kind of laid off that a little bit. Cody and I went last weekend unsuccessfully. We called in some fox. Yeah. We saw some fox. That was yeah. pretty neat. Mm-hmm. Uh, two of them yeah. in two different locations. Yep. Um, but, of course, fox season is out at right now yeah and uh so so yeah that was cool but uh i'd say coyote hunting's kind of on the down low for right now for a little bit now unless unless you know where one's denning um and you can really get in close to them and irritate them and and let them know that you're like an intruding coyote Mm -hmm. uh other than that it's kind of hard yeah yeah we listen to a bunch of podcasts of guys that do a lot of coyote hunting and where we're getting all of our information that's a uh, fox pro right yeah yeah the fox pro uh, what's his name i can't think of his name john collins yeah mm-hmm. yeah he's a pretty cool cat to mm-hmm. listen to but uh yeah <clears throat> we're maybe we'll, maybe he'll be there at deer and turkey expo him and tory yeah. tory from mfk game calls they teamed up with fox pro and mm-hmm. tory raises coyotes actually really yeah, oh I yeah know that yeah. oh yeah that's how they get all their calls and yeah, stuff all like their that. all their noises yeah Mm-hmm. he literally raises them and records the coyotes yeah throughout the year and that's mm-hmm. how they come up with their calls yeah yeah for sure so for sure he's got all the calls named after the coyote all the coyotes are named mm-hmm. um like uh oh i'm trying to think of one i, I can't remember some of the names of the coyotes but you know he, mm-hmm. he's got a a, a lone how um you know all kinds of mm-hmm. you know distress and and whatever but it's pretty neat. Pretty mm-hmm. neat. Uh, it'd be, uh, I, I can't imagine raising some coyotes and, mm-hmm. and recording them. That'd be pretty cool. So the only one I can think of is the rabbit in distress one, with the the raging cottontail or something like that. KG cottontail. Yeah, KG cottontail. That's a fox pro sound. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But really, the only hunting to be done right now is maybe some shed hunting yep. if you're a deer hunter. Uh, deer are losing their antlers right now get out there and and look for their antlers so that way you don't find them in your tractor tire <laughs> uh, but they're pretty good at hiding them i'm just ready for side dress season that that equals fishing for us mm-hmm. so yep yep we got some fishing trips lined up yep heading up to lake erie going to do some walleye mm-hmm. and uh yeah so that'll be a good time yeah <clears throat> we went to michigan last year and that was pretty cool too mm-hmm. but uh lake st Clair. yep yep we went up to lake st Clair, and that was pretty cool but yeah we we enjoy our fishing that's for sure so well walleyes are fun the, the best part about that's eating them oh yeah. i mean mm-hmm. uh but we go up there on a charter and we'll catch a four-man limit in an hour mm-hmm. um it's crazy yeah it's a blast for sure that'll be in may <clears throat> but but yeah um which honestly isn't too far away <laughs> no it's not we're we're going to be through march already and that's that's hard to believe but you know makes you sit back and you're like where'd all this time go oh yeah you know? i know i was looking at the board we always we have whiteboards and we just litter them with writing of notes of everything and i was looking at a whiteboard this morning and it laid out all the farm shows that we had upcoming this was like in november Mm -hmm. and it's like you look up there and every one of them farm shows is done and over with Mm -hmm. between between that and we got a list of all the vrt demos that we're going to be doing right and it is a list (laughs) i mean it is a list i know i know that probably got 25 to 30 guys on there it's crazy i know you know it's like where where are we going to find all this time to get all this done you know what i mean i know the but, 
the VRT, you know, everyone's heard the, the hype about it. Um, and I wish there was a, a way, but there's not. I wish there was a way for everyone to, like, if you could put on some, like, virtual reality goggles yeah. on a guy. I know it. I know and it. and he'd be, like, virtually walking mm. through a field that had been ran. And, yeah. You know, but you have to physically just go to their farm and demo it. Mm-hmm. And uh, nothing wrong with that. That just takes a lot of time. Yeah. I mean, one demo is going to take you a whole day. The, uh, the farming simulator deal. Yeah. It, like, it would be that. Like yeah for sure yeah Salford needs to come up with a simulator somehow to uh you just email a guy a file <laughs> and it's like okay here is an in-depth five minutes of it in corn stalks mm-hmm. at this degree and here's it is in bean at this degree and and you can like feel the soil and move it around mm-hmm. and it'd be cool it would be it would save so much time yeah. but you know you just got to get it on everyone's farm but mm-hmm. I, I can't wait for the day when the VRT is, is as well known as the independent series I know and guys can just kind of know what they do. Mm-hmm. Um, cause right now it's kind of an exploration stage, right? Yeah. Nobody knows what it does. It's too new like mm-hmm. type deal. You know, everybody and their brother had a five seventy back in the day and they're like, Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know what that thing does. Okay. So it just has more coils. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the know, VRT so. is just a totally different animal. It is. You could describe it all day long, but until you really can see and touch and feel what it can do, um, you know, you, you're kind of in the dark. So yeah, we've got a pile of those demos to do. I don't know how we'll ever get to half of them, but our plan is to get a, some of those tools pre-staged at the first demos. I want to have like three or four of them things pre-staged so that way – if there's a day that the weather turns and no matter what day of the week it is, that customer can hook to it and be like, Hey Adam, I think we can run tomorrow and boom, you know, we jet down there and, mm-hmm. and we run it instead of, Hey, call me when it's fit and we'll yeah. pull the tool to you and you lose a lot of time doing it. I mean, it, it is, it, it's nuts. I mean, like you think about last year and even over the fall, how many demos we did. I mean, it was just, you know, oh, astronomical oh on how gosh. many how many demos we did over the fall and it, it's just i think springtime is more of a guy like that's whenever guys want to know what it's going to do yeah you know oh I yeah think, don't get me wrong there's definitely a positive to to be doing demos in the fall i mean i sold one off of a demo during the fall so you know it, it's not saying that it's not possible to you know, get a guy talked into, not necessarily talked into, but getting him convinced that this is a tool for him in the fall. You know, we've technically only really had one fall with it. So, you right. know, it's, it's tough, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of work and we make our wives pretty happy doing it. So <laughs> it's easier to do in the spring because, you know, in the spring is where the rubber meets the road, yeah. you know, in the fall, you're just banking on it looking okay and being fine to plant into. Yeah. But then the spring is when you actually plant into it. Right. Obviously it's like, well, bring that tool down and I want to see what it'll do in these corn stalks and how, how I can plant into that. Yeah. Well, that's when the truth comes out. You know, Mm -hmm. can you plant into that? Is it smooth? Does it break everything up and do everything that you want it to do? So this spring, our focus is going to be on VRTs because we're pretty heavy on them right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, you sold one yesterday. I did. So. Yep. 25-footer going here south of Fort Covery, going down to Union City, Indiana. Customer had a Great Plains Terramax that we traded in. Uh, he liked the versatility of the Terramax. He didn't like the gang style of the Terramax. He saw what the gangs can do. Yeah. Uh, he saw his issue. He saw a lot of washboarding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to downplay any color of a tool. You've maybe seen the video I did comparing a 1200 to a Krause. And all I was doing is, is sh- showing real life the difference. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he liked the versatility of Terramax. He didn't like the washboarding effect that right. he was seeing. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, he, he jumped all in on a 25 foot VRT and, uh, I think it's going to be great. He ordered it and he won't get that tool till like September, but mm-hmm. he don't need it till fall. So, yeah. So it'd be 
perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, we're just, you know, guys will have some corn off for silage and stuff like that in our area. That's pretty common. Just a lot of dairy <clears throat> farms and stuff like that in our area. Pretty heavy in livestock. So it's, uh, you know, we, we are able to get tools running pretty early in our area just because of that. So, right. It's nice. It, it, I, I mean, we're pretty thankful for it, you know, for sure. You know, that's how we generate a lot of this content that we're able to show you guys. So it's, it's definitely beneficial to us and it's uh, kind of crazy the world that we live in, you know, it, you get outside of this area and you see a lot of stuff that's just still standing and it's like, yeah, we got some bear fields out there right now. And it's yeah. just livestock population and, uh, you know, Mercer County, dark County. And, uh, you know, even, um, I'm trying to watch Jay in Jay County. I mean, that's a pretty heavily, uh, heavily, heavily populated livestock area for sure. Oh yeah. Well, I think we overlook the manure. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, I talk to a lot of people and, uh, manure. I mean, it's amazing how far these guys are trucking this chicken litter, mm-hmm. you know, out of this area, yeah. just within a few miles of here, mm-hmm. they're sending it Southern Ohio, Southern Indiana. Mm-hmm. They can't get that stuff fast enough. Oh, I know it. It's um, crazy. And so I think we're fortunate on, uh, and sometimes we take for granted how readily available manure is Yeah, and what that stuff can do to the soil. Mm-hmm. But it it's a big deal. Yeah, it'll I mean, save on fertilizer. That's for sure. The the amount of customers that get this way, and they're like, "Man, there are a lot of livestock barns up around here." And mm-hmm. he goes, "What are they?" And I said, "You name it." I said, "It's everything." <clears throat> I mean, right. from hogs to chickens to turkeys. I mean, you name it. It, it, it. They're here. Right. And they're like, "Holy cow!" Like we've never seen this many, and it's just like, yeah, that's just really common. That's what we grew up around. I mean, that's. Oh yeah, I mean. There, you know, every hog barn's got 2,400 hogs in it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, within a 10 mile radius, there's, there's hundreds of, you know, if there was 20 barns, you know, that would be, uh, you know, five barns would be 10,000 mm-hmm. four barns, I guess would be 10,000. So, you know, yeah, I mean, you're looking at, you know, 50,000 maybe within 10 miles. Yeah. I mean, within a 10 hogs. Mile, yeah. in a 10 mile radius of here. I mean, it's oh, yeah. astronomical millions right? of chickens. Oh yeah. Millions. I mean, three miles, I think there's, that's 3 million. Mm-hmm. I think it across the road there. Yeah. So, and then you go down to Fort recovery, there's just <clears throat> as big of a complex right there down in the, just South of Fort recovery. Right. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. But, uh, millions, millions. Yeah. And, and then, uh, the turkeys Mm -hmm. is, is the same way. So it's definitely a unique place. mm -hmm. I mean, you you go Southern Ohio, Eastern Ohio, and there's, there's not the livestock. I mean, there's some, some feedlot fat cattle and stuff. You get over in the Hills in, uh, over there in Eastern Ohio, but nothing like there. There's some dairy out there, Mm -hmm. you know, out on Corbin's region. Yeah. Yeah. Up there by Wooster. Yeah. There's some dairy up there in his region. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nothing, sure. nothing like around here though. No, it's it's pretty crazy to think about, you know, how how lucky we are to have the amount of livestock that we do. Well, it it does several things, you know. It, it certainly probably makes buying ground a little trickier. Oh um, yeah, you for know, because sure. it, it drives the value up a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, but it also drives some corn bases too. Yeah, you know, yeah. corn bases around here is usually fairly strong because mm-hmm. they need, of course, the grain mm-hmm. to feed the animals. So you can go uh, not too far, and, and that corn basis isn't there. So that's a good thing, mm-hmm. um, but it, it's definitely a, a different world, that's for sure. I mean, we got, uh, you know, K&L, they're, they're like the largest chopper dealer for how long, you know, for Klaus Choppers. Yeah. There's guys in Michigan that come down here to, to get their choppers from K&L. And, Parts. Oh, yeah. I mean, you name it, it's... It's yeah. pretty astronomical how big of a hub they have mm-hmm. for, for but that. Not only that, you look at the dealerships in general right in this area. Mm-hmm. They're focused on manure spreaders, hay and forage, mm-hmm. uh, livestock producers in general. Yeah, um, it, It's amazing how many dealerships are carried in this area uh, strictly from livestock. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got North Star, you've got Burn, 
you've got Kenfeld in cold water, mm -hmm. you've got holes in Fort Recovery, you've got K and L down there, um, you've got TTG and Bluffton and Van Wert, mm -hmm. uh, Kenfeld, Apple, Apple, um, yeah, it's yeah, it, there's so many dealers right mm -hmm. here. So Koenigs and, and Bakkins. I mean, yeah, it, it's it's. It's crazy. I mean, there's, as far as a dealership population, there's a lot of, I mean, you talk to guys out in Illinois and Iowa and stuff like that. I mean, their closest dealership's a hundred miles and you're like, oh, yeah, how do you even manage that? Like, right. You, you about almost have to have your own freaking warehouse for half the stuff you own. Oh you yeah. Know, it, it, it's nuts. Yeah. I mean, if, if you wanted to buy a tractor right here where we're at, your options are endless. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, yeah. you could buy any color tractor for a mm -hmm. 20 minute drive. Yeah. I mean, if you're, yeah, if you're Easy. after a hundred, 150 horse tractor, there are five places that you could stop at within 20 minutes and you'd be able to get one. Yeah. Yeah. You that's, know. that's kind of unheard of. Yeah. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. No doubt. No doubt. Um, but today, um, Devin and, uh, Brent, you sent them out east, west, didn't you? Frankfurt, Frankfurt, Indiana. Yeah. What are they doing out there? So had a gentleman uh, called off a of farm world, off a of farm farm world ad for uh, planter, uh, you know, planter tanks and fertilizer applications, stuff like that. And he's getting it all there. He was getting it all set up, and uh, he didn't think that he'd have enough time to get it done. So we sent them out there. And, they're going to get that wrapped up here today, hopefully. So. I see. So doing uh, electric pumps, you said? Yeah, electric pumps, a couple of Benkos, and uh, running some plumbing and some red balls and all that good jazz. Cool. He had one of those fancy-dancy uh, aluminum distributors that we oh. like to talk about. Okay, yep. Yeah, so. Off the top of his pump. Mm -hmm. Did away with that. Yep. Put red balls on mm -hmm. it. Sweet. Yep. Sweet. Yep. He, uh, he had a ground-driven pump, and he just wasn't really satisfied with it and so he's like man is there just something that i can just it's super simple has a whisker switch and turn it on and off like real simple and i'm like yeah we could go electric and the gallonage worked out in his favor to where it would work and so we that's what they're doing today running some wiring and some plumbing and getting cool. that all done for him so I sent him down south near Richmond uh, on a pretty unique job the other day. It wasn't a big job, but kind of unique. I uh, have a customer that is running um, some, what's he running? Zyway? Is that what he's running? Oh, okay. I yeah. think. Mm -hmm. An inferro product that has to be agitated. And mm -hmm. so uh, he has two tanks on his planter. Uh, one's a pole behind and one is mounted on the planter and he wanted to know if we could rig up an agitation system and so what we did is we put an electric pump for each tank and we put a ag express made us a control box that went up in his cab with switches so he could turn the agitation on and off mm. and okay. basically all we did was rig up you know we're the inlet for the pump is sucking out of the tank mm -hmm. and the outlet is going in the top of the tank. Sure. So that pump's just going to run all the time mm -hmm. and recirculate product as he's going nice. to, to do an agitation kit. So, um, ag express made a sweet harness. Devin mm -hmm. measured everything and drew it out. So he would have a disconnect at the hitch yeah. and, uh, ran it back the planter. It wide off for each, pump and then it disconnected again at the rear of the planter for when he hooks and unhooks that pull pull behind wagon he's got a yet or all steer cart i would i would love to know just some of the different stuff that we've done that we don't have pictures of that you're just like some of the unique projects yeah just some of those different ones like you know this interceder bar out here you know that's going to be a pretty unique one for example you know um just some of that different knickknack stuff that you don't get into every day that you like I almost want to get like a like we need to have like a wall of fame board mm -hmm. and we need to have that like hanging in the office somewhere of just different neat unique products like that 16 row strip freshener bar yeah you know or, or the 32 row that went down to uh you know over by Bakken's you know those those are the neat unique deals that i wish that we had like a 
portfolio board of like guys would walk into our into our showroom and they see all these different neat knickknack things like kind of a picture collage almost i have uh i've got most of them on my phone Mm -hmm. i mean a majority you know um i don't go on the service calls like i used to yeah so i don't have them as much i ask them guys to take pictures of them all the time but sometimes they can be like truck drivers who don't like to call ahead um they don't always take the pictures for me so um so yeah uh, i don't don't always have those but we need to get back into getting those pictures taken i, I will say i'm i'm pretty pumped for some service calls this year oh yeah uh, i enjoy going out on service calls. oh yeah like working on an anhydrous rig or something like that you know mm-hmm. i i enjoy that stuff just keeps you sharp keeps you in the game like you, oh yeah yeah you know don't get me wrong, we're salesmen, but we we still like to do a little service too. So oh yeah, we like I like to get, to get our dirt. hands dirty. Yeah, because you can't talk about it fluently and knowledgeable um, without having the experience. Yeah, you definitely. went out on one this week with Elliot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty, pretty. Uh, I mean, it was pretty clear and cut. I mean, basically from Salford, the the main up and down stops for his axles. Something about whenever Salford assembled them, they weren't the right ones, and so he couldn't get his pins in and out, and um, it left here that way, and they couldn't get the pin out, so we went out and swapped those, and I mean, if they were all like that, I'd do them every day, you know? (laughs) We were in and out of there within 15 minutes. I mean, it was like nothing. Take a couple of cotter pins out, and you know, you're you're in like Flint, you know, so... I don't know, like there's stuff like that that's nice and it's just, you get it done so quick and you're like, man, like imagine if I had like five of those lined mm-hmm. up today and we got them all done and it's like, man, look how efficient we were today on yeah. that. Like, well, those ones are fun because, you know, you know that, I mean, sure, you wish that they were all quick, mm-hmm. but uh, you know it was done right, right and you know that you left the farm and the customers happy. Right, you know, definitely. That, the satisfaction is what I love about it because oh, yeah. they know that it's correct and it works and they're like, it's pretty awesome that you guys like showed up and just got it done real quick and no questions asked. You right. know, you didn't try to send me the parts and have me do it, blah, 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 you know. <clears throat> and, you know, that that satisfaction is, you know, really gets me going, mm-hmm. you know, just seeing that look from the customer and it's like, you know, you got them <clears throat> hooked to where they they love that aspect of us as far as how high quality our service is. Right. So, because you don't get that everywhere. Right. In this area, yeah, you do, but you venture out and you talk to guys and they're just like, yeah, I don't get this Mm -hmm. everywhere. And it's like, yeah, we're a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah, I know uh, Travis, one of our shop guys, he just went and did one this morning. We had a BBI spreader that I sold right there at the end of the year and he went out and spread on, on some of the ground, uh, I don't know, maybe a month or so ago. And he had two hubcaps kind of pop out, mm-hmm. um, of the hubs there. And so he called me and we got him new hubcaps in, but BBI also sent some hubcap retainers mm-hmm. with it to make sure it didn't happen again. Right. And he's a local guy. So Travis went out there and, uh, he had to pop two of the, uh, bolts out of the axle um he had to put long, oh, longer the, ones the wheel in studs. Yeah, yeah the wheel studs he had to pop two of them out and replace them with longer ones so that they could accommodate this hubcap retainer mm-hmm. and so we put hubcap retainers on every one uh to stop that from happening mm-hmm. again so so that was nice got that you know got that guy taken care of travis said it you know he went out and did it by himself yeah took it and said he he wasn't there for an hour so customers happy and mm-hmm. and everything's good to go. So that that's good, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing's ever going to be perfect, and, and no. it and it's not about making it perfect. You know, something can leave here incorrectly, and that's okay. But it's how you make it right it, is, exactly. is the difference. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I was about um, ready to say that. Yeah. So, um, no matter where you go, no matter what you do in this world, um, nothing's ever going to be perfect. Uh, it's, it's how you make it, how you make it right. Mm -hmm. So, and we work pretty hard to do that. Yeah. And and I think we do a good job of it and we're, we're 
pretty we got some phenomenal shop guys in there right now i've said that many times but man are they rolling mm -hmm. i mean you know you, you put a repair order in and uh they're on it you yeah. know they're going to get it done they clock into the job and it things leave here awfully awfully good i mean yeah. usually they're pretty tight yeah as far as the ship goes i mean it's it's a pretty tight ship whenever it leaves here like we try to make sure that we don't have to you know we're sending a lot of this stuff out of state you know four or five hours away you know we want to make sure that it's right so that way we don't have to send our guys to go fix it whenever right. it's not right so we do a pretty thorough job of going through it making sure that it is correct before they even get it right and a lot of that, I will attest to the new computer system that we got, honestly. Yeah. We got a new system that, you know, it, it's been a struggle to learn it, but it's called HBS. It's a dealer management system, but it allows us to uh, create jobs. And that sounds simple, but then what it does is it, it gives all of our shop guys a list of these jobs on their phone and it gives them details on what they have to do. And then they can go mobily through their phone and clock into that job, go perform the job and then mobily clock out. Mm -hmm. So they can go do five different jobs throughout a day, clock in and out of each one as they're doing it. And those hours automatically get logged into that job yeah. um, for, for invoicing and keeping track of what every shop guy's doing. Yeah. So that does so much for us. Um, it, it makes the job of the salesman a lot easier. Mm -hmm. If, uh, you know, if a customer calls in and just like those hubcap retainers, we created an RO, briefed Travis on what he had to do, ordered the parts, got them in, attached the parts to that repair order, and he clocked into that job, went and performed it, got back and, and clocked out. Yeah. So as far as tracking and invoicing, man, it makes stuff so much cleaner. I mean, in the past at the old shop, we, we never even really, I mean, we would keep track of it in a sense, but nothing down to what it is today. And and it can be a double-edged sword. Oh, yeah. So, sometimes <laughs> you can keep track of too, too many much. things. <laughs> and uh, uh, creates, it can create a lot of questions, just how it can solve a lot of questions. Yeah, so it's a double-edged sword, but for the most part, um, it, it works pretty well. And... Uh, it, it, it helps. definitely it definitely has made us more efficient. Oh, no question. By far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the shop guys enjoy knowing that their time is allotted in the correct way. It's accounted for. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, of course, they know that we're billing out their, their time. Mm -hmm. So they it, it gives them a feeling of um, uh, being able to uh, put in the effort to move the company forward. Yeah. You know, they, they, they definitely feel involved in generating revenue, mm -hmm. you know, because they know that they performed a good job on a piece of equipment. They got the customer running and that the uh, company uh, was able to move forward based on their work. Yeah. So I think they really enjoy, <clears throat> enjoy that part of it, knowing that, that they play a big part in, in the, the generating revenue of mm -hmm. the company. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're huge in, in that aspect. So, um, so yeah, the, the comp, the HBS system tracks all of our inventory, all of our invoicing and sales. And, and that's a big deal. Yeah. Um, you know, because whenever you have two stores, which two stores is not many at all in today's day and age, but for us, it's huge. Um, you know, what store certain things are at. And as salesmen, that's very important. Mm -hmm. So if a guy's coming to look at a BBI spreader, you don't really want to send him to the wrong store, right. <laughs> especially when those stores are three and a half hours apart. <laughs> and yeah. I'm not talking from experience or anything. <clears throat> never. No. No. Never done that. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Yeah, I'm here to look at this piece. Oh, yeah. Well, what store are you at? Oh, I'm, I'm here in North Mansfield. Oh yeah, that piece of equipment's at Coldwater. It's another three hours this way. Uh oh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, Cody, it's never happened. Well, I said uh, it's never happened. Uh, 
It's never happened. You want to talk about an awkward phone conversation, that's a good way to start one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, there's a lot of stuff out there, though, too, luckily. But uh, not all of it. Mm-mm. So the majority of everything. Especially whenever it's a specific piece of equipment <laughs> you're like yeah I've seen this thing on tractor house and uh, i was coming to look at it and oh i just typed in fanning equipment and brought me here and i'm like there's an address to where <laughs> one is yeah it's it's easy to overlook you know it is but uh, that's all right i'm i'm guilty of it yep you're guilty of it everybody's guilty of it yeah so but, but uh oh. except dad no yeah no he no way <laughs> you were thinking it i just said <laughs> i know <laughs> Uh, uh, he he don't listen to our podcast, and he wonders he why hear. he calls us the destructive duo <laughs> instead of the dynamic duo. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's kind of a gist of of what's going on now. Um, you know, the we're we're ahead of schedule by a large margin, uh, but but numbers show otherwise. You know, we're we're selling equipment at at a faster pace than what we did last year mm-hmm. but but the shop is is at a way faster pace definitely um, than last year but but it also i think has to do a lot with how we order product too because we order a lot of this stuff ready to go now yeah like we used to because there's definitely you you can save some money by ordering it partial from the manufacturer and kind of building it up on your own in the shop but it creates a lot of time a lot of like, work yeah, like the BBI spreader that we sold yesterday. He dropped a hitch pin in it and left at that same time. Mm-hmm. So there was literally zero RO hours on that unit. The applicator Jake sold today, he sold it as is, and the customer pulled it home knowing there was some repair work to do on it. Mm-hmm. And he dropped a pin in it, and it's gone. So those two units get zero RO hours. So, um, you know, we're ordering things more ready to go rather than having to bring them in the shop and, and kind of custom fit them, I guess, yeah. to this. Yeah, for sure. Which saves so much time. It, it's crazy. But, uh, but yeah, w- one of the big things we are starting to work on now in the shop that we haven't really touched on, which we're going to have Sam on a podcast here soon, is uh, we're starting to build our own Y-Drop toolbars in-house. Yeah, and... I don't know if we've necessarily talked about Sam a whole lot, but no. you want to talk about a cat that can play with metal like Play-Doh? Yeah, you stole that saying from me. He's, I say that. He's a whiz. Yeah, he's a whiz. He is a whiz. Um, no doubt. Um, no no one else knows metal like Sam. It's mm-hmm. impressive. But he's in charge of... Uh, doing the Y drop toolbars in house. So he's creating the fixtures right now. Uh, he's in charge of ordering the parts and, uh, we're going to, we're going to start grabbing a hold of that manufacturing and doing it here in house. Now Mm -hmm. machine work and stuff like that's going to be done outside. We're going to get the machine parts in here. We're going to put them together in the fixture and weld them up because we want to be in control of the quality. Mm -hmm. We want to be in control of the timing and, uh, and all that. So uh, the Y drop toolbars for 2024 are all going to be made here in yep. the shop. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a good move. I think they're not that they were ever skimpy on quality before, uh, but it just gives us control of our own lead time. Uh, it allows us to uh, just kind of keep a tighter beat on them and, mm-hmm. and hopefully narrow down some lead times. Whether the, whether it's, you know, just, well, when are, are they going through powder coat? You know, where are they? You know, with us welding them up, you know, we know exactly where they're at and w- what the time frame is on them. So that'll definitely help us out quite a bit. I think so. I think so. It'll create some more leg work. It'll be a little bit more juggling. But uh, mm-hmm. I think at the end of the day, we'll be able to just keep track of stuff definitely. A, a lot better. Know where things are. Yep. For so, sure. So. But... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that I have anything else. Um, you know, we, we covered a lot of stuff on this podcast. We didn't have one specific thing to talk about. but uh, Just kind of shooting the breeze. <clears throat> yeah, a little bit. A little bit, but that's what a podcast is for. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's 
excited for the beef expo this weekend um going to get uh going to get our our dose of of cattle mm-hmm. in us for a little bit and uh, get us fired up about turkey hunting well yeah i forgot deer and turkey expo yeah yeah turkey hunting's around the corner man turkey hunting's hard and we're gonna have to find some time to do that yeah it, it won't happen i know <clears throat> but we always say we're going to go but we never have time <laughs> with planners and everything else going into the field and, we're, and then... I mean, we're just not that good at it i i I, I couldn't kill a turkey if I had to. We've only ever went really once. Maybe twice. I yeah. mean, I've turkey hunted a lot. Yeah. Like, a lot. Mm-hmm. When I was younger, I turkey hunted a lot. I did a lot of public land hunting down in Vinton County, Ohio. Mm-hmm. And um, I've went a few other places. I went to Kentucky one time. Um, but, yeah, it's it's hard. Those birds are smarter than they look. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Their eyesight's unbelievable. Their hearing is unbelievable and it's just such a short window you can hunt them for like four weeks yeah I know, you know i'm right. used to deer hunting i get like four months <laughs> yeah. we can work in that and work that into the schedule oh yeah well, and of course turkey hunting's only in the morning pretty much yeah. I mean, so you pretty much have to be there the night before hunt pretty much all or most of the morning. day morning so <clears throat> it's just a little bit different on schedules the coyote hunting just so easy with scheduling i, I put the kids to bed and and we go out and, you know. Granted, we don't get home until 2 o'clock in the morning. But. Right. But, you know, at least at least things at home are taken care of. You know, oh, yeah. the, the wives don't miss us. Not that they would anyways. But, uh, you know. They, they don't uh, listen. We can talk about them. Yeah. They, uh, <laughs> they, uh, they hardly know we're gone. You know. It's uh-huh. like we weren't even there. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So, the coyote hunting works out. But, so be doing a lot more of that but mm-hmm. so oh, yeah we're, cody got a new thermal scope yeah we're going to be able to video these hunts now yeah so and you guys want to talk about a comical scene <laughs> we might be able to to bring some really good content might to be table. able to generate you some laughter yeah oh we got one come in oh yep oh no that's a raccoon <laughs> oh there's one oh, no that's a rabbit that's a possum yeah <laughs> if you've never looked through a thermal scope you need to try it sometime it gives you a pretty good indication of what you're looking at, um, but it can be hard to dictate sometimes. Mm-hmm. We're getting better at it. You know, if you're looking out through a field and you see uh, a uh, heat signature, signature, mm-hmm. you know, if it's not moving very quickly or moving at all, it's likely not a coyote. It's you know? probably a deer. Deer, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and if it's moving really fast, it's probably a raccoon. If you're if you haven't called yet, yeah. But if you're running the call and it's moving quick, it's a yoke mm-hmm. you know, or a fox. Yeah, especially yeah. if you're doing uh, like a, a distress call, mm-hmm. get ready. And yeah. things are coming. They're going to come in a hundred mile an hour. Mm-hmm. You're going to see them about two seconds before you shoot them. Yeah. So it's pretty neat. It's like so it, intense. It is unbelievable. <sighs> I can't even describe it. We should have three under our belt, but yeah, we only have two. Yeah, so yeah, Cody missed one. The first if you're not the, catching it was that hint. it was actually the first night that we ever really went. We got two of them. Yeah, kinda. We went here the one time. Yeah, but I don't. I don't yeah. necessarily count that. I do, but I don't. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. We were able to bring Zayden with us. And yep. Yep. He had his light. Yep. But. Well, we're going to quit rambling and get off of here, and uh, we're going to get back to work. Um, So thanks, everyone, for listening to the podcast, and uh, we'll have another one to you soon. Yep, stay tuned.